Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of RTHD. In this quick episode, I want to show you guys how to actually get a better stream going. Um, and talking about the quality of your stream, etc. Especially if you have a stream that's really jerky and it's because your computer is a bit slow and the CPU is, you know, getting overloaded and so forth. That can actually affect the output that the viewers actually see. Of course, um, we are assuming here that your internet is fast enough to do it. So this is going to be focused on you know, having a slower CPU that isn't capable of doing both games and streaming at the same time. So the, this is born out of an issue that I had. I have a computer that is, it's not the fastest, it's not the slowest, it's actually in between. In fact, on the CPU benchmark, this computer here that you're seeing here, that I'm running OBS Studio on, is actually, uh, the pass mark is about uh, a little over 5,000. So it's slower than like the Ryzen's. The Ryzen's are about 7,800 or so. Uh, but this is like 5,000. And it, it does a decent enough job, for example, at uh, League of Legends, for example, which is a game. Um, but the problem is, is that when I run games, and then I also run, uh, you know, the actual streaming itself, the streaming itself, the encoding itself actually slows down the computer and it causes, you know, jerky um, video for the viewers. And that is, of course, you know, it's going to stop viewers from actually looking at your streams or staying on your streams for very long. Because if it's jerky, you know, the quality is low, they're going to move on to another channel. So the there is a solution to that. And of course, there's many solutions. Of course, one would be upgrading, investing money to upgrade and get a faster computer that could handle both um, but I of course um, had a perfectly fine computer per, per se when you see it it actually does what it has to do which is play the game but it just couldn't stream and couldn't do the processing as well at the same time so what you can actually do is there's a new feature that I discovered um, that you can actually um, split the streaming so you can split your encoding onto another computer and continue to use your main computer to do you know the actual task of the game that you're playing etc and then send it over to that other computer that's going to do the encoding and send it out as a stream so it's not really beginner mode today but this is something really really useful um, if you want to you know use the hardware the current hardware that you have um, and get the return on investment on that before you have to purchase another um, you know another uh, more expensive device or expensive computer to do that. All right, so what we have in front of us here, you should be seeing is the OBS Studio. This is the standard one. This is not Streamlabs OBS. This is the standard OBS. You can actually use Streamlabs, but I use this, this the plain OBS Studio, the original OBS Studio, because it uses a little bit less CPU, and then there's not a lot of work that um, I require it to, to do, except send whatever is on this computer onto my second computer, which we'll get to just now, all right? The second computer, of course, I'm talking about is the computer dedicated to streaming, the actual encoding and sending out to the, to the internet, to Twitch or wherever it is, right? So this is what we're using to record or to see what's happening on this computer, OBS Studio, the basic one. Now, there is something called NDI, which actually does that. So it takes whatever's on this screen and sends it over to the other computer which is going to encode the data and send that out to Twitch or YouTube or whatever when I'm live. So in order to get this set up, you will notice on the tools that I have an NDI output settings. Now, this is not standard in OBS Studio. You, the first time you install OBS Studio, you won't see this. You won't see this option. You have to actually go to Google. You can use Google and just type in NDI OBS Studio. And once you click that, you'll see the first link, which is OBS, the OBSproject.com. And you click there and you'll see OBS-NDI. And it says New Tech NDI TM Integration. And just click there. And you'll get to this forum post that comes up here. Now, you could, you could read through this because it actually explains what it does. It adds simple audio, video, input, output over IP using this technology. And pretty much, you just go to, go to download. And once you down, once you head to the download section, you just simply download OBS NDI 4.7.1. Of course, I'm on Windows, so I'll be downloading the Windows package, the Windows installer. So you choose the Windows installer. Of course, there's availability for Debian, which is Linux, and uh, there's a zip file. I don't really use it. Mac OS, 
and also I have no idea what that is for. But yeah, so back to Windows Installer. You just download that and you install it. Now when you download and you do actually install this software, it's gonna um, most likely prompt you to also download the runtime. Now as you can see, here is the run runtime here. So you can actually download this separately and run this as well. So the main thing is you're gonna install both of these files, basically just double click on it when you download, like click download, it's gonna download, and then just click on it, run it, and it's gonna install up everything for you. And um, once you finish, reboot the computer. And when you reboot the computer and you open back up your OBS Studio, which we have open already here, and you click Tools, you'll see this option here and the I Output Settings. Now, once you have that, you click on that, and then you go and enable Main Output. It might be disabled like that, so you just click Main Output, and you name it whatever you want. So you name it. So I named this one AMD Game Comp 1, which means AMD Game Computer 1. And so all you have to do is, you know, just click OK, and that's pretty much it for your gaming PC, which is this PC here. And now that you have that, you know, all set up, uh, you then, I'll have to bring across my, I'm, I'm going to remote into my second computer, which is the streaming computer. And here you can probably see it now, I'm dragging it across. This is my streaming computer in here. And as you can see, I have Streamlabs OBS version 0.2, It doesn't matter the version, this is the latest version, right? So I use Streamlabs OBS here. Uh, now Streamlabs OBS Studio, um, this is the computer, I, I, as I said, is going to, is taking the feed from my other computer. As you can see, it's already showing you what's on my other computer. And um, it's going to take this feed and this computer is going to process it and send it out to the internet. So that's going to save a lot of my first computer CPU because I don't have to have it processing that the stream itself and encoding it and that kind of thing. The separate computer that has its own processor and CPU is going to do that part for me. So I'm saving a lot of CPU by doing that. All right. So in order to actually reach to this point, you'll have to do the same thing that you did on the other the, on my on the first computer I just went through, which is download back the NDI software and install it up here. And then, of course, make sure you have Streamlabs OBS. So you could have, just have OBS Studio, whichever one you decide that you want. And you simply uh, install, reboot the computer, uh, restart the computer, and then open back up your Streamlabs OBS Studio. Now, as I said, I already have this thing set up, so I want to show you it. It is a scene called NDI Stream 1. You can name it whatever you want, but the main thing is you create a new scene and you go to NDI Stream 1. And as you can see, under Sources for NDI Stream 1, you see NDI Source here. This is not available by normal install of Streamlabs. You have to install that driver in order for this to become available. And of course, for those of you who don't know, when you start a new stream, you won't even have any sources available. So you have to actually click on this plus button and you'll notice here under standard there's an NDI source and you click NDI source and you click add source. And then once you do that, um, we have already added a source but I'll, I'll go through it. So I'm going to add a new source, we'll call this NDI source. Two, it doesn't matter what you name it as long as it's unique. You click add source. And then here, under source name, it should automatically detect all the NDI, um, <laughs> all the NDI computers that are actually doing NDI. So pretty much it's gonna go only, only be the one that we set up, which is AMD Game Comp 1. And you just click on that and look, it already shows you what's what's happening. So it's actually showing the screen as well. And of course, make sure that your bandwidth is highest because I think that is going to be better. No, oh, so that's a very important as well. You have to make sure that your both computers are connected to reliable networks. I have tried this with Wi-Fi and for some reason, audio gives trouble. Audio actually cuts off when um, I use this over Wi-Fi. So I actually had to hard cable onto my gigabit um, router in order for this to work. So I would suggest you do it like that first um, or else you may have issues with audio or even video. Um, so yeah, you set it for the bandwidth of high at highest. Um, for 1080p, I noticed that that used about 50 megabits per second over the internal network, not over the internet, just the internal network. And I left everything sync to uh, normal network. You can actually use a low hardware acceleration if you want as well too. That, that may speed it up depending on if you have a, a GPU uh, computer or not. So you could try both and see how well it works. 
And that's pretty much it. You don't have really have to do anything much else other than that. Uh, so once you pretty much do that, as you can see, I created two now. So this is actually the second NDI one in here. It's a little bit confusing. So I'll just get rid of that because um, we don't really need this uh, that piece. Um, oopsie. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we're back to the normal piece. So what you're seeing here is the second computer that is pulling um, pulling my the screen from my first computer. And so all you have to do from there on is just go live and now this PC here, which is the second PC, is going to do all the encoding for you and you don't have to worry too much about um, you know your CPU being overloaded on your first computer, which is actually performing the task of um, you know doing the scenes, etc. and uh, playing your games or whatever it is like that. It's going to save uh, a lot of um, a lot of resources, as I said. Um, so I was having trouble with actually generating 720p. Um, because my com my first computer was actually overloaded, and um, by doing this, I was able to really you know have a perfectly fine 720p um, video stream because I did this. I split up the load between two computers instead of one. All right, guys. So if you liked, if this was a good idea, please make sure and like, and uh, of course, please subscribe because uh, you know if you have any questions and so forth as well too. Um, you can always post that in the comments below. I'll also have the links below as well too. So you can get um, this piece of free software as well that actually helps out with the streaming. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for viewing. I'll see you guys again soon on another episode of RTHD coming to YouTube screen near you. Take care.